Clemson for the win. They advance on to the NIT quarterfinal. Clemson wins it by one, 50 to 49. That's too bad. Illinois fought their way all the way to the end. And a shot. Yeah, you fought, you fought like you did all year. That part was good. I'm proud of your resilience. It was a fun group to coach because I, I like you guys. I love you guys. I said this last year, fellas. Stuff like this you go through. Obviously, John and Joe, they built this thing for as much as they could. But all this stuff does for me is motivate me like you've never seen. It. And you gotta have a chip on your shoulder and an edge. We have a vision. That vision has not changed. Along the way, when you have a journey, you take multiple steps forward. You might take one or two back. And it might make you better off for it. Then we took multiple steps forward again. And I've said numerous times, the freight train is moving. Okay? You're either on, or I, I'm not interested in anybody stop being on the two feet. I don't care who they are, because the freight train's moving. The last thing I'm going to say is it's interesting. John and Joe sacrificed a lot for the development of our team down the stretch. And as we head into next year, sacrifice is going to be the word that's paramount. And I want you to remember that I said that. Everybody's got to put 100% effort all the time. And once you get that, then the other stuff can take care of itself. Making sure that you're there for one another. You're looking to your left and looking to your right. Make sure you take care of each other. For the seniors, I mean, it's our last go around. Just give it all we got. Have no regrets. Two months before the 2014-15 season tipped off, the Fighting Illini suffered a tough loss. Senior captain and point guard Tracy Abrams was lost for the season after injuring his right knee. When it first happened, we was uh, doing a four-man group skill. We were playing um, two on two, and um, I was posting a mod up. I just went up, and I came down regular, but my body just shifted, and I guess that's when it all happened. As soon as it happened, I knew like I was hurt, a couple hours later, I found out that I tore it, but uh, I've never really been hurt to the point where I have to sit out for months and months. I mean, it was a big loss of I mean, losing him, but I mean, he's still out there. I mean, he's still going to be like another coach to us, uh, telling us what he sees out there, helping us any way he can. I mean, we just got to listen to him and not taking it personal. It's good that those guys have confidence in me, uh, even though that I'm not on the court. And, um, I just got to step up to that role and you know, play my part the best that I can even though I know I'm not going to be on my court. From day one, Tracy was a uh, big help with the first day I got here. Remember, I remember the first day I stepped on campus, Tracy was the one talking to me about whatever what we were doing at the time, workouts and you know, weightlifting, just coaching through, trying to help me throughout this with the system. You know, a lot of people think we'd be competing and all that other stuff. He was, he was with me right on from day one, just being a leader that he is and just helping me out through the transition process. So I thank you for that big time. And he does the same now. I never once thought of it as a, as a competition. You know, people look at it like that, but um, I just want to win at this point. You know, um, I just get guys on board that have that winning you know, mindset or mentality. We talk a lot and about on the court stuff, off the court. So he'll be a big voice, just like he was on the court. He'll be the same thing. He just can't step into the lines, but uh, which is unfortunate. But he'll be a big voice on the sideline. I feel like uh, it was really disappointing for him. You know, I felt bad for him because he was really looking forward to his senior year. And then for him to go out like that, it was really heartbreaking. But um, I think he really handled it well. And I think the fact that he handled it so well, it kind of made it easier for the rest of us you know, to handle it just like him. And you know, he is a great attitude right now. He obviously is going through a lot right now. But you know, he, he, he you know, handles it real well. And it makes it easier for us to handle. I'm really excited, you know, uh, anxious, kind of want to get out there, kind of just have a good time and, you know, go win the game. It's been a year and a half since I played a game, so uh, first time at State Farm, should be fun. Well, it's pretty exciting. I uh, understand that, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of last go around, so it starts tomorrow, and um, I think it's, it's a good thing. It's finally good to get the season going and, and see what we can do. Um, just come out, compete every game. I mean, play it like it's our last. I mean, for the seniors, I mean, it's our last go around. Just give it all we got. Like Nana said, have no regrets. 
especially myself and Aaron, but uh, you know, the rest of the guys too, we're ready to get after, play a game in front of the fans, you know, play against somebody else and just, you know, test ourselves and get ready for this, this long season. So uh, we're definitely anxious to do it. As long as we play hard, and I mean, that's, that's the goal, I mean, make it to the tournament. So I mean, once you get there, anything can happen. So we just gonna come every day, compete, listen to our coaches, and hopefully that's the outcome. Well, first off, it's just the NCAA tournament. You know, I've, I've never been there. A lot of the guys here have never done it. But then obviously, once you get to that point, you're gonna wanna keep winning, you're gonna wanna keep playing. So it's hard to say what's gonna be satisfying. I would say, first off, NCAA tournament in advance, and that would be satisfying. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to uh, Fighting Illini Game Day. It's game number one of the basketball season. Indeed, the Illini in action tonight against Georgia Southern. Mr. Tate, how are you? I'm good. I'm ready for basketball. The uh, fans coming tonight will uh, take part in the uh, Orange Hush. We've done that uh, here before with uh, uh, the uh, fans not uh, cheering much before that 10th point is scored. That's uh, an old Taylor University uh, tradition. And all of a sudden, now here's game one, and they opened it up, and we're ready to rip and roll, man. Okay? Compete at both ends of the floor, and I just think if we communicate, all five guys that are out there that have tie us together. That, that's what we need. Let's seize the day. There ain't no other place I'd rather be tonight than with this group right here, right now, in this moment in time. Let's go out and have the time of our lives. Here tonight, as we start 2014-15, for the season, and Agwu wins the tab easily at center, and this season is underway. Easy to say, here's Rice at the other end for Illinois. Pass inside to Morgan, who got free and laid it in. Bounces it a couple of times. Rice up, it is good. <laughs> so there you go. Now we can make some noise. Oh yes. <laughs> That'll get it going, 10 to five is the Illini lead. Here's a pass out top, nearly deflected, it is wow. stolen. Here they come, four on one. Nod, alley oh, oh, oh. and a slam. Here we go. <laughs> None to Leron Black, and a timeout called by Georgia Southern. Going the other way, three on three. Rice with the layup, banks it up and in. The count it, and he's fouled. Rebound, Doyle gets it back, shot blocked by Colbert. And it's back within six for Georgia Southern. You're right, you're going to have to knock him out. Tate to Cosby for two, and he nailed it. Georgia Southern had to pay attention to Eagwood. Here's Doyle, and he drives in, and Nana says, get that thing out of here. <laughs> Knocks it into the orange crush. 80 to 71 is going to be the final score here in the season opener over Georgia Southern. This is a high level. you got to mentally be locked in. you got to grind it every day. You cannot just show up and not be ready to play. And I thought we had a little bit of that tonight with some guys. You know, we'll talk to you individually, but it's a quick turnaround. You know, we got one day, and then bang, we're right back at it on Sunday at 5 o'clock. I think it's a good thing this time of year we'll play games. The Illini offense exploded during the next three games, averaging over 100 points in blowout wins over Coppin State, Austin P, and Brown. Outlet to Tate, lob to Black, what a slam dunk. Starts back in, alley you kill to Anglu who got free and he lays it in. With his first two points tonight, here's a steal by Nunn and he'll flip it in. The Illini trailed at the half, but they win it big over Brown, 89-68 to go to 4-0 as they head to Las Vegas. Illinois headed to Las Vegas for Thanksgiving for the first leg of a three-game road trip in which the Illini would charter over 10,000 miles in eight days and receive their first true tests of the young campaign. Director of Basketball Operations Mark Morris, who is in his fifth season working for Coach Gross, is in charge of making sure the fighting Illini get to each destination as hassle-free as possible. Our job in our role is to really, when the players take the court, to not think at all about how hungry they are, if they're tired at all, or how much they've slept. The only thing they should be thinking about is the game plan, the opponent, and what Coach Gross has put in place for us to win the game. We, we currently fly on private planes every single place we go, so we're really fortunate just to have the airport and Willard about 15 minutes away from 
hub and hop on a bus, head out there, and we came straight to Vegas. A successful trip for me at the end of the day is to make sure I don't get yelled at. But uh, there's a lot of things that go on, a lot of people you have to rely on to get a job done. But with the people we have here within this program, with our, our student managers we bring on the trip, they're unbelievable. Jessica Gorky with academics, she takes care of that side. Mike Vazgear and Paul Schmidt. We've got an army of people to service these guys at the highest level possible. The other thing is, you know, you think that being away from family during these, vac these holiday times is tough. But being with Coach for five years, you know, he's, he really preaches a family mentality. And it starts with him. He makes everybody feel comfortable. He's so positive as a boss and as a leader and as a coach that you don't even really think about that. One, two, three. Oh, 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 oh. One, two, three. Hey. On Thanksgiving Day, Illinois faced the Indiana State Sycamores. The Illini made eight of their first nine shots to build a 30 to eight lead and would coast to victory in the semifinals of the Las Vegas Invitational. Crusader gets the steal, takes it coast to coast, oh, and Cox oh, oh, goes back and blocks oh, it oh. Now with it. Good defense. Gets it back to Colbert, who runs the court and slams it home. Austin <laughs> Colbert. 20 seconds now. Tate for the three-pointer, got it! <laughs> Jalen Tate. Illinois will come out with win number five on the season. 88 to 62 over Indiana State. That's going to wrap things up. But a reminder, we've got Fighting on Men's Basketball coverage for you tomorrow night, a 9.30 tip-off against the winner of Baylor and Memphis. I, I like the way we came out. That was the first time we'd come out that way in a little while. We were like batting one for four. Tonight, we smacked them to start the game and said this morning to my wife, I'm really, and I mean this, I'm really thankful for the opportunity to coach you guys on Thanksgiving. And I wrote down four or five things this morning. By the way, you have to bring at least one of the things in your mind that you're thankful for to the meal tonight, got to say one thing that you're thankful for, okay? But I'm thankful for you guys and the opportunity to get to coach you guys. I do not take that for granted. Trust me. Yeah, I really consider it a privilege. All right? Great job. We advanced to tomorrow. Play tomorrow night. Okay, I'm looking forward to it. Let's get our bodies and minds ready to go. Let's play our best game tomorrow. We're one game away from, from winning the tournament. Okay, got a big-time opportunity tomorrow <coughs> night on national television. And the start is very important in this game. Illinois, may, we may not see the start they had yesterday, 20 points in the first four minutes, but need to get off to a good start here today. Well, this game might have some uh, streaks and stretches. It may not be quite as up and down uh, like uh, the other game uh, yesterday. We'll Jumped out to a 7 nothing lead. Edgar gets three inside and slams it home. Rice, coast to coast, left-handed layup, and on. on. Great play by Ravante. Nice. Back to it. Yes. Alley oop. And it's good. Ravante Rice from Jalen Tate. And then he finally gets it out, and it's none on the baseline. Little short left-hander is good. Point line back out to Egwu. Starks with a long three-pointer. Good. Got it. Amon Starks. Back to Malcolm Hill. Hill drives all the way in. Left handed shot is good. Oh, he's fouled. Oh. There's a screen for Starks. The jumper is no good. Tip up no good. Rebound. Cover. Oh, yes. And one. <laughs> Medford doing a lot of dribbling and they get that steal. Here comes Kendrick Nunn on the breakaway. Right handed layup is good. Kendrick Nunn. Malcolm Hill. Impressively here. The Championship of the Las Vegas Invitational goes to the Fighting Illini. Great job. Rice and Malcolm Hill again pace the attack. The victory over Baylor gave Illinois its ninth regular season tournament victory in 12 tries and kept them undefeated in November during the John Gross era. Three Illini were named to the all tournament team, and Ravante Rice was named tournament MVP. not have shot the ball much worse in the first half, okay? And, and yet we're right there to take it because you did not tie your offensive shot making to how hard you played on defense. We call that winner's grind around here. We, I thought a huge play in the game, and I'm telling you, it's hard 
you don't play at all, and I just throw you in there, was Colbert's uh, offensive tip. <laughs> Planning this event, I actually picked the hotel way back in February when we knew about the event and everything got finalized. And one of the scenarios was the games were going to be on uh, Friday and Saturday. And due to national TV, it actually got pushed to Thursday, Friday. So I had to change everything because we were going to try to fly straight to Miami for the Tuesday game to have our bodies be. Uh, most ready for that game Tuesday. So moving forward to the Miami trip, it'll be tricky and we gotta be really careful, but we do have a plan in place to make sure that those bodies and their minds will be ready to go Tuesday on an Eastern time zone in Miami. For the final leg of their cross country trip, the Illini headed to Miami for the ACC Big 10 Challenge to face unbeaten and nationally ranked Miami. Former Flying Illini and Orlando Magic star Nick Anderson met the Illini at their hotel to give them a pregame talk before the showdown with the Hurricanes. I've been watching you guys from afar. I haven't had the opportunity to get out. I just spoke to Coach Gross a couple times on the phone, but I support y'all from afar. I'm Illini down. I know what you're doing. Tonight, another challenge. I always say don't run from the competition, run to it. Bring it on. Go get it. Don't wait for it to come to you. Go get it. Be nasty when you get it. That's how I play. Get, be nasty when you get it. When I came out of high school, man, I could have went anywhere in the country. But I wasn't going out of my state. I wanted to represent. That's just the way it was. I wanted to represent. I represent that I. Here's a backdoor. Sherman Price between the circles puts it on the deck, drive down the lane, layup is good. Count it, and he's fouled. 48-44 Miami. Cross court, they find the net. Launches a three, missed it, no good. Right wing. Hill with a rebound. Outlets a nine to the basket. Lays it up and in. Hendrick Nod with an 8-0 run. Here's Tate. Jump pass to Hill. Left wing three is good. Malcolm Hill with a three. Six point Miami lead. And this is a minute possession right now with two offensive rebounds. McCon down the lane, missed it. Jakiri the rebound, put it up and in. What a killer. Miami wins it. 70 61. Illinois bounced back from their first loss of the season with a 70-55 victory over the American University Eagles. They then headed to New York to take on seventh-ranked Villanova in the Jimmy V Classic at Madison Square Garden. You know, I talked to a mod Starks and Aaron Cosby yesterday. They both played here before, and they said that's the one thing you notice when you first walk out here is how bright the lights are. And this is, uh, he said, it's almost like actually being on stage. So, it's uh, the lights are going to be on them tonight and see how they perform. One, two, three. Up, 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 up. One, two, three. Yeah. The Illini and Wildcats battled back and forth under the bright lights of the world's most famous arena. Illinois trailed by six points at halftime, but used second half runs to tie the score twice at 38 and at 50 with eight minutes to go. Sophomore Malcolm Hill kept the Illini in the game with his career and game high 20 points. However, the efficient Wildcats scored on 10 straight possessions down the stretch and pulled away for a 73 to 59 victory. Tough game for the Illini. And the two biggest opponents so far this year, games are somewhat similar in how they played out. Slow start, Illinois fights back in the second half, but can't get over the hump. Same thing that we saw in Miami. So Illinois has to look at that. What's the difference and what can they do to improve? Welcome to Fighting Illini Game Day. Indeed, here at the United Center in Chicago, where the Fighting Illini take on the Oregon Ducks in a game that tips off here at about 6 o'clock. <laughs> 
the guys get excited to come here. You got a lot of guys from the Chicago area. A lot of guys grew up Bulls fans. You play on this court, kind of brings something out of guys a little bit. And I think uh, that, that's probably what contributes to it a little bit. And but even you know, the past couple of years they played some pretty good games here. How different do you think this Oregon team is? They've got still got Joseph Young, but otherwise it's a bunch of new guys. Really. Joseph Young is one of the better guards in the country. He just scores at, at all kinds of levels. He can handle it. He can shoot it. Uh, you can break it down a little bit. So he's a guy that you definitely got to watch out for. And they've got some young guys in this lineup now who are doing some things for them right now. I think that they're just young. Kind of like this Illinois team. The Illinois is not really young per se, but they've just got a bunch of new faces playing together. Not necessarily new, but just you know the transfers are getting out here for the first time with these guys. LeRon Black's trying to get into a rhythm with things there too. So just a matter of getting into a flow. And I think Oregon at some point, once they get it all together and these guys get more comfortable playing college basketball and playing together, they're going to be pretty good. Lineup, stat sheets. Compete. You're not going to play perfect. Nobody plays perfect. But that on it, we're going to compete. And we're going to know with the right heart, the right mindset. All right, LeRon, you got it. Let's go. One, two, three. All go, all go. One, two, three. Finish. Anna Eglu to jump it up at center as we get this one underway. Illinois and Oregon jumping into center is Elgin Cook and the Illini win the tap and this one is underway from Chicago. Led by senior Ravante Rice, the Illini jumped out to a 13 point first half lead at their home away from home. Here's a three by Rice and he got it from near the NBA line. Here's Ray with a three. Ray Rice from the left wing. He's hot early. Ray Rice already with 10 points. He has 10 of Illinois' 12. The Illini lead is seven over Oregon, 23-16. Right corner driving into the paint is Young. Shot blocked by Nana Eglu. Here is Rice, charges down the lane and lays it up and in. Great move by Ravante, quick to the paint. Two late threes by the Ducks cut the lead to four going into the locker room. Illinois shared the ball on offense, tallying 17 assists on their 23 made baskets. Rice equaled his career high with 29 points and made a career best five three-pointers. 51 seconds to go, Starks in the corner, looking for an opening, Cosby. Right wing, Rice, fadeaway three, it's gone! 73-70 Oregon. Illinois' defense couldn't stop the Ducks down the stretch, and Oregon left Chicago with a 77-70 win. And the Ducks have swooped into Chicago and stolen one from Illinois. That's your final score tonight, 77-70, as uh, Illinois falls to the Oregon Ducks to drop to 7-3 on the season. And the Illini uh, need to regroup. They'll have Hampton on Wednesday night at State Farm Center. And then the Bragg and Rights game will be uh, coming your way next Saturday against the Missouri Tigers. Portside at the uh, State Farm Center, the Illini getting set tonight to take on Hampton out of uh, Virginia tonight. Here is Rice, free throw line, drives in from the left side, put it up and in. 45-31 Illinois, they want to push it. Rice charging down the lane with a layup, missed it. Follow though is good by Nana Egwu on the follow. The Illini are going to get the job done here tonight against Hampton. They win it 73-55. And we're headed for St. Louis. Got obviously got a big one on Saturday. It is as good as it gets in college basketball. Okay, it's one of the best rivalries in college basketball. Um, I mean, it's a great game. It's uh, one of the biggest rivalries. I mean, we're just glad to participate in it. I've watched the game the last two years, and uh, just you know, you can tell the atmosphere just from the, the television. And uh, you know, they say. Last year it was like 20 some thousand fans and you can the guys talk about it all the time how crazy it is how crazy the game is the atmosphere coaches say it's going to be a battle so um, I'm looking forward to it as well as the rest of the guys and like you said if it's going to be a war then we got to be ready to fight